All right, in this video, we're going to go over solids with a known base. All right, so to, to this point, our shapes are made up, you know, when we're finding our solids, our shapes are made up by stacking together geometric shapes. All right, so we need the formula for the area of one of those cross sections. Now, previously to this video, all of our cross sections have been circles, so we've been using area equals pi r squared. But what happens if our cross section does not form a circle? Well, then we're going to have to use the area formula for whatever shape our cross sections make. So if it makes a square, our area is going to be S squared. A rectangle, length times width. A triangle, one half to base times height. A circle, which you should all be familiar with, pi r squared. A semicircle, remember a semicircle is half of a circle, so it's half of pi r squared. And then the area of an equilateral triangle is uh, square root of 3 over 4 times sine squared. All right. And of course you add up every possible slice, so that's where you get your integral from A to B times of your area of your slices. All right. So these integrals are going to work the same way they did for circles, except you're going to use whatever equation fits your cross-sectional shape. Let's look at an example. Find the volume of a solid with a base formed by y equals x from 0 to 3 with cross-sections perpendicular to the x-axis in the shape of squares. Now, you might be asking me, what does that mean, cross-sections perpendicular to the x-axis? Well, this is what it means. All right, let me go ahead and draw it. y equals x. 3, 0. Now, what that means is our squares are going to look like this. If you can imagine my 3D drawing, these are perpendicular to the x-axis. So these would be standing straight up out of the board, basically. All right? it's still, you still solve it the same way. We want all this area under here, but now our cross sections are squares. So our volume from A to B and our area formula we're going to use is sine squared. So it will be S squared. All right, so volume from A to B of our function here is Y equals X. So S would be X, so X squared DX. Now you simply integrate this from 0 to 3. And when you integrate this, you're going to get, uh, let's see, X cubed over 3. From 0 to 9, of course, you can throw out the 0. 9 cubed is 27 divided by 3, which is 9. All right, so our area of our solid with cross sections in the shape of squares perpendicular to the x-axis from 0 to 3 of y equals x is 9. All right, let's look at one more example. Because remember, you do these the same way. You're just using your new formulas now. So find the volume of a solid with a base formed by y equals x, so the same function, from 0 to 3 with cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis in the shape of semicircles. All right, so it's still going to look the same, 3, 0. But now our cross sections are going to be semicircles. Okay. So our volume from a to b we're going to have to use 1 half pi r squared dx. All right, now, so we have to find the radius of this. Well, what's the radius? Well, r, your radius will equal 1 half times your equation. All right, since our equation is y equals x, our radius is going to be x over 2, or 1 half x. So our volume from a to b of pi over 2, all you do is combine that, of x over 2 squared, that's an x, x over 2 squared dx. Now you simply integrate this, so our volume is going to be, when you integrate this, you're going to get, well first to square it, so 0 to 3, pi over 2 of x squared over 4. dx, 
And after you integrate this, evaluate it from 0 to 3, it's just like we've been doing. You get 9 over 8 pi. All right. So these work the same exact way, except now instead of this always being pi r squared, you're going to have to substitute in the formula for the area of your cross sections. All right, and keep in mind, if they're, if they're a semicircle, you have to figure out what the radius is. All right, in this case, the radius is one half times the equation. All right, but other than that, they work the exact same way. You just put your new formulas in here. Like, for instance, when we did the square, we just used side squared. So we just integrated x squared dx and got 9. All right? So it works the same way, just new formula. All right? So this has been your solids with a known base. You can watch this video as many times as you need to. Make sure when you come to class tomorrow, you are ready to work some problems. See you tomorrow.